Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. Well, here it is, Tuesday again, and this is your ghost host at the squeaking door. <laughs> Tonight's story is called The Last Story. It's an original radio play by Christopher Mayo, and our star is Richard Widmark, who plays the role of Tony Muse. We're going to a small Maine Coast fishing village. Flounder Cove, where fishing folks go to bed early, to the lullaby of the surf and the buoys offshore. But this night, there is a new note added to the lullaby, a discordant note, which for all its strangeness serves only to keep awake the man responsible for it. Anthony Muse, the young newspaper man from the city, is typing furiously while his bride sleeps in the other room of their fisherman's cottage. Dead fingers cannot type. A dead heart cannot ache. But that's the end of a story that began when my paper sent me here to Flounder Cove to do a story on fishermen. I spent my first morning sizing up the town. And about noon, I found myself walking along a rocky bluff away from the village. I was approaching a little gray church and a little gray cemetery. And the grass was lush by the large tombstone. Mother, give me some sign. Tell me. Show me that I'm not a murderer. I don't really want to kill anyone. But I feel it. I feel I must. Huh? Sorry, miss. I, uh, I was passing by and, uh... Well, I couldn't help hearing you. You... You heard me? <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Don't go. I, I'll leave you alone if you like. Who are you? Tony Muse. I didn't mean to eavesdrop. All right. What you heard me say, you would have heard from the others. If you stayed here a while. This grave here. Mary Shermit. You were, uh... Talking to someone, I, I mean... I'm I Rita Sherman. She was my mother. She died when I was born. You heard me talking to her. Well, I heard some nonsense about, uh, oh, about you not wanting to murder someone. You're not a murderess, are you? I've been a murderer since the day I was born. Murder is in my heart, as it was in my mother's, as it was in her mother's. Why do you keep your head turned away, Rita? Look at me for a moment. No, I can't. Yes. I'll let you see. Look. Look at my eyes. Look in the sunlight. What? They're yellow. Yes. Yes. Yellow eyes. Murderer's eyes. Her eyes were yellow. The most beautiful eyes I've ever seen. I saw sunlight and gold and buttercups dancing through tears. But I saw no murder there. Only a horrible hurt that tortured soul. And I felt pity. And the desire to know more about Rita Sherman. Killer runs in the blood. Got yellow eyes, just like a ma's was. They're pretty eyes, though. Yeah, right pretty look at. Mother's was, too. She got a killing fit and drive the knife through a man's heart. Why? No reason. She come near hanging for it. Well, didn't she? No. Governor changed it to life. She was gonna have a baby. Who, Rita? Yeah, Rita. Harry Sherman died, born in Rita, prison hospital. Uncle Zeb's good Christian. He took baby and raised her. Well, why does she stay here? Uh, she can't bring herself to break away from a ma's grave on a bluff. Talks to a ghost. Everyone I spoke to agreed that Rita Shermit would kill someone someday. I should have taken the afternoon train. My story was finished. 
But I didn't. I should have forgotten Rita Shermit and her unhappiness. But I couldn't. When I saw her standing on a high point above the hungry rocks on the bluff that afternoon, when I watched her step to the very brink of that bluff, I should have turned my head away, but I couldn't. Rita, you have a fire! No, Rita! No! Stop struggling, Rita! You, you come back! You come back or you take me with you! Why don't you let me? I can't go all this way! I can't! Why did you do that? You had no right to slap. I do have the right. I... I love you. Oh, dear heaven. No. Is that so horrible, Rita? Didn't you... Didn't you see in my eyes? I saw superstitious nonsense, Rita. You've been told that you're a born murderer since you were a child. You're being driven toward it. I can help you, Rita. Please let me. You can help me least of all. Why do you say that? Because of what Uncle Zeb told me last night. What did he say? That you are probably the man I was meant to kill. I kissed her. And I found on her lips such a hunger for love and for understanding that I was blinded to the violent forces of nature I was dealing with. Had I known, I might not have called on Uncle Zeb that evening or heard what I did as I froze to the porch of Rita's waterfront shack. The front door was a Put that down, you see, devil. The money's gone and... No! No, don't! I pushed the door open and I faced Uncle Zeb. Not a very pretty sight. Pinned to the wall by a long whaler's harpoon through his stomach. He wasn't dead yet. His red-rimmed drunkard's eyes pleaded for relief. But you can't pull a barbed harpoon back through a man. Even I knew that. Who did this, Eb? Tell me who, quickly. Was it Rita, Eb? It wasn't Rita, was it? Tell me. Tell me. Look. Not Rita, he said. Not Rita. But who had done it? And who would believe that Rita, with her yellow eyes, hadn't done it? Who would believe that now that Uncle Zeb lay in a darkening pool with a stained harpoon coming through his back? Who? Well, here comes the sheriff now. Hey, hey, sheriff. Did you catch her? Let me through here. Yeah. Come on, folks. Let me through. Yeah, did you catch her, sheriff? Sure. Sure, I did. Well, I know that sheriff would kill somebody someday. Yes, sir, I know it. Listen to me, Sheriff. Rita Sherman. What? What? You got it all wrong. Emma Hathaway done it. What? What? Rita Sherman. Say that again. Rita Sherman didn't kill Uncle Zeb. Emma Hathaway killed him. Sherman Garrett couldn't have done it. She took the five o'clock express. Bought a ticket for New York. I wasted no time leaving Flounder Cove. They promised to flag a through train for me that night. The sheriff came to the station with me, and he filled me in on the story. Who would have guessed Mamie Hathaway and Zeb was buying all those stories about Rita? But why, Sheriff? Were they trying to drive the crew crazy? And or worse, they could murder somebody. And they'd have the money all clear. What money? Zeb got $20,000 in cash from Rita's mall while she was in prison to raise a cat on. Zeb thought nobody knew that. So he was going to use the money himself. But Mamie Hathaway knew, huh? Yep. Rita's mom told Mamie just before she died. Mamie told Zeb she knew. So he had to cut her in on the deal. Lovely people. What happened last night? You come into the picture and Mamie sees the gals falling for you. She goes to Zeb and wants her share. And they each made a mistake. Oh, Sheriff. Zeb told Mamie he'd spent all the money. Mamie killed Zeb, thinking sure Rita'd be blamed for it. You see, son, nobody except Cal at the station here. No Rita had left around the pool. Do you know why she left, sir? I reckon I do, son. And I hope you find her. I have to find her, Sheriff. 
I couldn't very well tell the sheriff why I had to find Rita Sherman. Better than anyone, I knew a girl was just then arriving in New York. A girl who was unstable enough to become a homicidal fiend. I was standing on the subway platform at 14 when I spotted Rita. She was standing at the front end of the platform with a small group. Things happened fast then, but I remember just as I started toward her, I noticed the man who wavered close to her at the edge of the platform. I saw her hands raised slowly toward the man's back, and then I heard the train come. I saw her go to pull him back, officer. She wasn't quick enough. Rita. Yes? You... You don't think you pushed the man, do you? I'm not sure. I just saw him leaning, and I raised my hand. I just don't know, Tony. Well, you didn't. I saw you. You were going to pull him back. Now let's talk about us. Darling, you don't know how I've looked for you, but now... Now, baby, I'll never let you go. Oh, Tony. I can't... I, I can't... Can't what, darling? I can't see you again. It's not that I don't want to, Tony. But Dr. White won't let me. Who's Dr. White? He's a wonderful man. He's curing me, Tony. He's a psychiatrist. He says it would be dangerous for me to see you for a long time. Dr. White. He became a high, polished wall I couldn't climb between me and the woman I lost. I forced a couple of dates with Rita, but it was always the same story. Dr. White says you are part of my past that must be forgotten. Dr. White says I'll have to forget you if he's the cure. Dr. White says, Dr. White says, White, 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 White. Dr. White will see you now, Mr. Mule. Thanks. Mr. Mules, what can I do for you? Who's paying you for your services, Dr. White? Why, no one. Rita came to me for help. I became interested in her case. Oh? The case or the subject, White? Frankly, both. I see. Well, that puts the cards on the table. She comes to you as a patient wanting to be cured for my sake. You fall in love with her and influence her to stay away from me. Yeah. Only part of that is true. She shouldn't see you yet. A very neat way to eliminate competition, Doctor. Very neat. But I'm moving in. I suffered the tearing pangs of jealous hate in the days that followed. Rita refused to see me until White had released her as cured. But there was one way to beat White. And I planned accordingly. I parked my car across from his house on Long Island. It was a deserted section along the shore. Shortly after midnight, a cab came along, and I ducked... I followed White up the driveway until he heard me. Who is it? Tony Mews, Doc. Mews? What are you doing here? Let's go inside where it's comfortable. Oh, no. We'll talk right here. Don't let's mess up your driveway, White. This is a gun. All right, Mews. What is it? You've persisted in keeping Rita under your influence, Doctor. Now you're going to let her go. <laughs> Not a chance. And how can you make me do it? By killing me? No, not by killing you. But a letter from you will do. Rubbish. 
You'll either write what I tell you to write, or you'll never psych again. All right. All right. Dear Rita, I've been called to the coast for some important and confidential work. Before going, I've reviewed several of my cases. I feel that you have sufficiently advanced to be considered quite normal. I will check into your progress on my return. Sincerely yours, then sign it. Frankly, Muse, this is childish. What's to prevent me from showing Rita this letter as a forgery? I've thought of that too, Doctor. Oh, Muse, why be rash? Listen to me. The trouble with you as a psychiatrist, White, is that you never met anyone who wanted something as much as I want Rita Sherman. Oh. 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 And I mean to have her, Doctor. He was light and easy to carry. I crammed the trunk compartment of the car shut on him and I locked it. In town, I mailed a letter to Rita. And I waited centuries for the night to pass. And then more centuries for my phone to ring the next day. Tony Muse. Tony. 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 Whoa, 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 darling. Is there anything wrong? You're crying, Rita. I know I can't help it, dear. I'm just so happy. I just received a letter from Dr. Wood. He says... Rita, you don't mean he's released you. Baby, pack your toothbrush. I'll pick you up in the car in one hour. We're heading for Lake Arrowhead, darling. This is your wedding. Day. Lake Arrowhead was a beautiful lake. And a deep one. It hadn't been easy to act normally on a trip up with White's day old corpse in the car with me. But now I could rid myself of it. Only one ugly task left. Then time, time and Rita's love would dull these memories. I opened the car trunk. And I found his eyes staring at me. I pulled him out of the car. Now, the rope, the topple and bag I bought, the knife... And the saw. The doctor saw. I was ready. It took me a half hour and all. No one would have guessed then who was packed in the weighted topple and package I dropped into the lake. It was finished. I was free. And I went back. Tonight we reached Flounder Cove. We're spending our honeymoon here. No man ever had more than I did to be happy about with Rita. Rita, my wife. It was an expensive moment. I only realized a short two hours ago that the happiness I'd bought was impossible to hold. Rita dozed off peacefully. I'd gone for a smoke and a walk on the walls. When I returned, I paused at our cottage door. There was someone moving about inside. I waited. Then I opened the door softly. Rita was easy to see in her white nightgown. She was walking softly toward the bedroom. She was walking in her sleep. I followed softly, my heart beating wildly. She paused for a moment by the bed, looking down at my empty place. And then she spoke in a voice that couldn't have been hers. Yes, mother. I know I must. Yes, Mother. My world was still, hushed, balanced, 
ready to fall on me. Rita's arm raised slowly, and there was a single glint of mental as she brought her arm down, and she leaped on the bed like a wild animal. Her arm flailed up, down, up, and down. I saw her get up. I saw the knife buried into the slit mattress. Watched my wife return to her bed. Then came here to write this story. The strange forces of the mind are not to be tampered with unless it be to resolve their cure for all time. Well, that's the story. All but the ending. And the end of the story must be acted out. (laughs) Ironic twist, too. The same gun I used on White. Rita will never wait to find that she is a murderess. It's far better this way. Happiness was not for either of us. To whom it may concern, I, Anthony Muse, do confess to the murder of Dr. Donald White of New York City. I further confess to the murder of my wife, Rita Sherman Mews, this night. This, my last story, I bequeath to all editors whose past patience has been tried by my artificial, unconvincing, and contrived efforts in fiction writing. I'm going for a walk on the bluff above the sea. Rita, didn't you know whom the gods would destroy? They first made men. Rita! into the dusty file, brush it off, and present a still up-to-date replica of a whodunit of yesterday. This is the American Forces Radio and the Television Service.